baby. <laughs> welcome, 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 welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon and Nostalgic Runner. And we are back for another Real Housewives of Miami, season six, episode 15. And this is called Get Me Off This Gondola. And child. Miami is well, Miami's that girl. I'm just gonna say it. My I mean, I, I don't know if y'all haven't figured that out by now. But Miami is definitely that girl. Um, well, Father Dude, let's not waste any time. Let's get into it because there's a lot to happen this episode. I have a lot of thoughts. So let's do that. Okay, so the ladies are still on this boat from hell. <laughs> they they literally are. And they are rolling through. Um, they're still in the middle of rolling through the islands of the island of the Dolls. And I'm going to say this real quick. Um, and this. I don't want to be offensive to any culture. So this particular section of the video, um, I'm just doing a little bit of a mini PSA at the beginning. I do not mean to offend, but I'm just going to say straight up. I would have never done this gondola ride for me, for me personally. And it's for, I, I don't do the rich craft. I don't do anything that seems like it might be spooky, like ghost hunts. Thing. No. Going to Salem for fun? Absolutely not. I don't see any, for me personally, I just, I can't do that kind of thing. That's something I will, I, will, I don't partake in. Um, and I know that doesn't, that's not what it means to everyone. And I know there is good witchcraft. I know there's not bad, not all witchcraft is bad. But for me, because I don't dabble in that, I don't mess with it. Um, I'm not against people who do it. But I'm just saying it right away. <laughs> Not my ministry. So for me, I, you would have never even caught me anywhere near this island. Mm -mm. Absolutely not. So I'm just going <laughs> to, I wanted to say that right away. Because also too, I have a fear of dolls. I don't even like Chucky. <laughs> like The movie Chucky, I didn't even like that when I was a little kid. I actually have a fear of Cabbage Patch dolls. I Dolls creep me out. Like actually, like legitimately. Other than like Barbie dolls, they don't. But like. Baby dolls, as a little kid, whenever I had any baby dolls, I would ask my parents, don't ever buy this for me again. Because <laughs> most baby dolls freak me out. I mm -mm. Anyway, so while this is happening, Julia is getting super, super emotional because it's reminding her of her baby son because it's baby dolls everywhere mainly. But there are also Barbie dolls that are just hanging and stuff. And... Um, you know, she had a baby that died. So this is just adding, it's opening a lot of trauma, unresolved trauma that she has within herself. So she is crying. She's still crying hyster hysterically while um, Marisol and um, and Alexi are like comforting her. All the ladies are actually genuinely freaked out. Um, Larsa, I think, is just kind of indifferent. But Larsa just being different when it comes to most things. But every... Really, Larsa, I think, was freaked out, too, but she just kind of... Larsa doesn't have that many changes of expressions when it comes to her face. So she just is like... Like, her face is always the same. So I don't know. But anyway, my whole thing is... The whole point point is... Oh, there's a lot of screaming on the boat because they're freaking out. Um, people are crying. It's a hot, chaotic mess. And then <laughs> it turns out that... Marisol and uh, Adriana have to use a restroom, so they have to get up on the island and use a restroom. And the island's even creepier. Like, it's so creepy. There's dolls everywhere on the island. Um, and Lisa is there with her phone just documenting everything. Um, basically investigating. <laughs> you know, like typical horror movie stuff because it kind of was giving that i'm not gonna lie the way they filmed it was kind of like that and i hope um bravo wasn't offending people i feel like they may have been the way this was filmed i'm not gonna hold you but it's an edit show so let's be mindful of that and i'm again i am apologizing ahead of time i don't want to be ignorant of anyone's culture but I personally would not have been able to stomach it because I just don't like, I don't like, I don't like baby dolls and a lot of them just hanging there that might be disfigured looking and stuff. No, thank you. Um, anyway, so 
Marisol shares in her confessional that she thinks that bro, aka um, Alexia, hired the wrong tour guide for this because between the dolls and then the fact that Julia, every, everyone in the group knows about Julia's like thing with her losing her son. She's like, it's a mess. Um, but I ain't gonna lie. Like, Marisol was a much needed comedic relief for this whole thing because the way she was narrating things, I could not help but to laugh. It wasn't really funny, but <laughs> Marisol is a hot mess and I love it. Um, and so Lisa's exploring the island, like I mentioned, and also Adriana, because I think there was only one restroom, so it was one at a time type thing. So Adriana is with Lisa waiting for Marisol to get done using the restroom so she can go to the restroom next. And then they end up going into like this kind of like hut type thing. And it turns out this is where people do witchcraft at. Um, Lisa was in there and out of there super quickly because Lisa was like, I don't like the energy here. I'm, 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 coming, I'm getting back on the boat. Most of the other ladies did not really get off the boat. Like least like really Julia the whole entire time was on the boat freaking out. And same thing with even um, Dr. Dr. Nicole was also freaking out. She wasn't, she didn't, she didn't want any part of this. She's like, I don't know. Mm -mm. She's like, I didn't have the tragedy that you had, Julia, but I don't want anything to do with this place either. Um, Cause even the legend of why it happened and why their dolls are there, it's, it's all creepy. It's like, it's giving um, Bloody Mary. Like the legend is creepy itself. So it is kind of, it gives you that feel. Um, so I think more the adventurous type would want to go over there or people who are really into that kind of thing would want to go. Again, it's not my ministry, so I wouldn't do it. But anyway, so while all this is happening, they're all trying to hurry up and get everyone back on the boat because Julia is literally losing it the whole entire time. And so they're ready to leave. Gertie starts crying too. And we're... They're, I'm not, none of us are exactly sure why. Like, I never really got the answer. Um, she doesn't know either. And to me, it seemed like she was having a panic attack. That's my opinion. Because I'm not going to lie, the way Gertie was acting, even to the point where she was getting sick, um, before we find out what actually happened, that is actually something I have done multiple times when I have um, panic attacks. Or anxiety, not really anxiety attacks, usually a panic attack. Um, I will work myself up so badly that I will get physically sick. I will just start, I will, I'll start shaking, I'll start panicking, and I will like, I, I, will, I will end up puking. Like it's happened to me. It doesn't happen often so much anymore because I usually have coping exercises that lead to it, but I do have moments where it just randomly happens. Um, I would say the last time I had it was probably, I, my last panic attack I had was probably back in 2021. I um, actually was heading home to see my family and um, it was raining horribly, like really, really bad, like to the point where I couldn't really see the road. And I felt rushed. I felt like I wasn't together. I was very disorganized. I didn't really have much of my stomach. I probably was slightly dehydrated too. And I literally, um, cause I had, I, I was working a really stressful job at the time, a job I did not enjoy. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I ended up pulling up the side of the road close to Lincoln Park Zoo, um, getting off the, getting off of, um, the lake, um, LSD is what we call it here, AKA, um, Dusabo Lake Shore Drive. <laughs> um, happy Black History Month, by the way. Um, founder of Chicago. That's his name after black founder of Chicago. Um, anyway, so I had to pull off on the side of the road, um, freaking out. And I had to like turn my car off and just like calm myself down. But like, I literally was there sitting there for a good 30 minutes. And I ended up having to call my parents and tell them I can't, I can't go today. Like I just, because the more I thought about going forward and trying to push through, the more I was making myself nauseous. And I actually almost did puke. So I, I 
waited another half an hour till my heart rate and everything got calmed back down. And then I drove home. I probably shouldn't have drove home. I probably realistically should have just like went to get my car the next day. But driving home was much safer than trying to drive three hours home. Um, where I was at the time was maybe only 10 minutes if that. It wasn't even full 10 minutes. So anyway, I say all that to think that's what I was thinking that was going on with Gertie when this was happening. And also too, mind you, Gertie, <laughs> she just had two back-to-back -back major surgeries and she's here on this trip. She's traveling. She's not really slowing down as much as she probably should be slowing down at this point, considering the fact that she's battling cancer and she has chemo that she has to do soon. Like it's a lot. I mean, you literally can easily can make yourself physically sick over these things when, because mind you, both t the things that I was talking about is just me being norm normal health, normal bill of health, but just having panic attacks. Imagine having that going on and you have, actual other real life stuff going on, AKA cancer, like your health is not even great. So anyway, so Gertie's actually getting worse, by the way. So it goes from Julia not be doing okay to all of a sudden, like, cause they're, cause they're finally leaving this place. They're finally getting away from this Island of the dolls. And all Julia wants to see is like a, like, a duck or some type of animal because we know that Julia's sanctuary are is is some type of animal because animals that's her thing and she's like I just need to see something and <laughs> oh my gosh um Marisol makes a joke saying so where are we going for dinner are we going to be going to a graveyard because I ain't gonna hold you and I know I'm saying that a lot but Alexia what this trip is weird. <laughs> it is an interesting trip. And I'm not going to lie. It's been, it is a trip that's given what needs to be gave and not basic at all. But they go from going to like, like having like a normal chill day, which you should on day zero to like having the eyes wide shut party to this gondola ride from hell. It's, <laughs> it's been nuts. But anyway, so Gertie is still not feeling well, though. Um, so the lady did chuckle when she said that. But Gertie's still not feeling well. And um, Kiki ends up providing her with a bucket. She actually begins, she actually starts throwing up. Like, it's not good. And as, um, and Marisol's like, okay, guys, we need to be quiet because and I know that too. That's another, that's another reason why I thought maybe she was having a panic attack because noise makes that so much worse. <laughs> you want quiet. You need just to be centered. You need to go back to being present. Noise makes that kind of thing worse. So she thought that's what it was. I think I'm pretty sure Marisol might have thought the same thing. And also too, the other thing I forgot to mention is they're in Mexico city. <laughs> the altitude there is altituding there. So I think the other thing that none of the ladies are taking on consider consideration, considering that they're like in kind of swampy lands or in Miami, because that's like below sea level type stuff, to Mexico City where the elevation's elevating. Altitude sickness, people. Altitude sickness. That's a thing. Anyway. So as Marisol stating that everyone needs to be quiet, she's not feeling well, a mariachi band <laughs> star literally shows up and is playing music on another boat going towards them and stays right there. And everyone is trying to single them out and span to stop it and to go away. And they're trying to like pretend they're enjoying it, but at the same time, because they know that the mariachi band's for them. And this is, of course, if everything was going like good, but it's not. Everything is going wrong. They want them to go away. And then also another boat is there when there's literally like a dog barking too. And Gertie the whole entire time is just sick. Just like throwing all the way up. It's really, really bad. And I was like, wow, 
This was really truth the boat. This was truly a boat ride from hell. There's no other way to describe it. Where was the holy water that you had? You should have brought that holy water from the church, man. Bad. So, it gets from bad to worse. Gertie is literally so sick that the um, production crew finally gets gets everyone off the boat and to get some help. And while all this is happening, by the way, Lisa and her just uh is looking for her lip gloss on the boat while all this is happening. She asked everyone, have you seen my lip gloss? Not even taking consideration that you literally have a, you have a castmate who's sick. So while this is, so it's just, it's just a mess. And so, yeah, anyway, I'm going to say this, that I should probably also mention this ahead of time too, with this episode. I already said last episode that I'm done with Lisa for the season. And I'm still down with Lisa for the season. I, I can't deal with her. And honestly, she made it worse this episode. Like, it's just she keeps making it worse. And I'm just noticing the energy is only with certain cast members. Like, why aren't you considerate of Gertie? And also, why are you not considerate of Kiki? Those are the two that I notice you do that the most with. And I'm just, I'm questioning why is that. And there's a certain pattern there. I don't like it. I'm just saying. I hate that to make call the thing a thing, but when the patterns are patterning, I don't know what else to say here. Like I'm kind of done with it. But anyway, so they ended up, they actually ended up calling the EMS to go and get Gertie some help. Um, and that was Dr. Nicole, both Dr. Nicole and Alexia both agreed that that needed to happen because Alexia is like, I'll play with health for obvious reasons. You know, she has her son who's um, now special needs because of a horrible accident that happened to him. So she's like, she doesn't play those games. And Dr. Nicole, she's like, yeah, her vitals don't seem okay. And you can actually tell that Gertie was not doing okay. She looked horrible. She looked really, really bad. Um. Anyway, they, they fast forward to 10 minutes later, the e EMS arrives and then she's literally in the car and Dr. Nicole goes with her. And I don't think they actually ended up taking their, her to the hospital. All they did was just make sure her, they, um, so Dr. Nicole made sure her vitals were good and make sure she got back to normal. Cause she probably wasn't okay. I mean, I'm pretty, she wasn't okay. Cause Dr. Nicole was there. So she knew she was not okay. And Dr. Nicole pretty much concluded that she was probably dehydrated, which side note makes sense because the whole entire time I'm watching this episode, well, last episode and the continuation of this episode, I was wondering how long were they outside in that gondola ride. And I never, I didn't see water there not now once. So I'm just like, why don't y'all have any, and they, you know, they've been drinking all day too. So yeah. And she's not 100% healthy. So she probably actually needs to hydrate more than the rest of the ladies do actually. So that make that that definitely checks out. So they actually end up getting her IV. She face um, Dr. Nicole FaceTime Russell for her to get her feeling better, and that's that on that. So while that is happening, um, Kiki and Alexia um, get on the bus and kind of let the ladies know what's going on, and then they both double check to make sure that all that um, Gertie has all her stuff and all her belongings. Um, and so the three of them came through. I ain't gonna hold, they, they, they did that. And even, um, and Marisol was like making sure she was okay too. Really, Larsa was kind of, Larsa, Julia, and uh, Mir, Julia didn't really do much. She was just kind of, or if she did, I don't know because I didn't really see her. Larsa wasn't really not there for her, but she really wasn't there either. She was just kind of there. Same thing with Adriana. And um, Lisa was just, all the way didn't care she came off as if she didn't care at all and yeah all right so fast forward it is day three the day of adriana's performance mexico city's gay pride parade parade for uh, gay pride performance and it's and off to the plaza she goes so she's already glammed up on the face and she goes to the plaza to get ready for her show the rest of the ladies are getting ready as well um 
Kiki FaceTimes her mom. And we later find out in the episode, she's also saying hi to one of her children. Um, I don't remember last season if she mentioned she had kids or not, but we definitely find out towards the end of this episode that she definitely has kids. Um, two to be exact. And it's interesting how we find that out. Anyway, so Julia's getting ready as well. She FaceTimes Martina. And Julia tells her about the pride there and her kissing everyone. And Martina, <laughs> and also Julia jokes that she's going to turn everyone lesbian. <laughs> but not, but she was totally kidding. And um, Martina's like, yeah, well, we'll, we'll probably be getting, getting a toaster in the mail soon. And Julia did not get the joke. And I, I always wonder what, what comes with Julia and it's going to come up later on this episode too. And it came up earlier on the season. There just seems to be like with her, um, everyone, the barrier of understanding tone and delivery and all that with English and America is not really there for her because everyone else, even though they might be Latin American, they're still American, so they still have that American like type of thing for with them. And even Martina, to a certain extreme, she has that too. But Julia, it just seems like because she is like Russian, certain cues don't they go over her head. She's just it's, it's not there. Um, so the other thing is, or maybe she's pretending it's not there and she's being messy. It's one or the other, but. <laughs> definitely a thing um but the reason why i said that is because she did not get the toaster joke do y'all get the toaster joke okay so martina actually explains it and she mentions that um there is a joke that if you, <laughs> if you end up turning enough people out turning enough women out to the other side aka being a lesbian um the um lesbian community will greet you with a toaster saying hey you did that <laughs> i've heard of that before but maybe just because i'm i don't know i've, I've heard of it before that's anyway. um yeah so gertie's getting ready and dr nicole checks up on her and dr nicole is so happy to see that gertie is like looking like a million dollars she's doing so much better and um basically while that's happening alexia and marisol they're get, they're also getting ready alexia states that she should have had water while they should have had like more water while they were on that boat ride and they also should have had holy water which i mentioned that earlier on but yeah because it was it was a mess and uh yeah so then also we see that Lisa's getting ready and the only thing she is talking about with her glam is this damn juice box and again thrown at her. It's like, Lisa, why do you choose to stay a victim when it comes to everything this season? You are not a victim among your friend group. Maybe among Lenny. I mean... I don't know, though. The bad thing is, and I hate this for you. I really hate this for you, Lisa. This is making Lenny look better. And I don't think you wanted that for you. But it's making me look at you and think, oh, this is why the marriage with you worked so well. You two are kind of one in the same. He made you... He Instead of maybe him making you Barbie doll, he created a monster. Maybe that might be his view. And so now he's starting all over from scratch. I mean, it's kind of giving that. And I hate to say that because let's face it, Lenny's still Basula. He's still trash. But I don't know. You, you're spiraling and I get you're spiraling, but... Mm -mm. the fact that you're still hanging up on this fight between you and Kiki which at the end of the day it was not that serious you made it serious it wasn't that bad Kiki was trying to talk to you but it's like every time especially with Kiki whenever she tries to talk to her and console her woman to woman 
and just in a normal tone she elevates she becomes aggressive and she don't give that energy when it comes comes to the other ladies i don't like that but anyway so anyway lisa still doesn't think she did anything wrong and then back to Alexi and Marisol. They're talking about what Kiki and her discussed during FaceTime because um, Kiki ended up FaceTiming Alexia. And Kiki explains why she was upset with Lisa. Marisol and Alexia think that they both were wrong. Um, and the only thing I'm going to say that Kiki did wrong is that she threw the juice box. That was about it. But at the same time, I mean... Really, if you think about it, what all Lisa was doing, she should be happy. That's all she did. Because any woman that has less restraint would throw her off the boat. Because I even mentioned last week, I wanted to throw her off the boat. I wanted magically a current to appear and just fly her off this boat. Like, that's what I wanted. Because she was getting on my nerves. She was getting on my damn nerves. <laughs> but anyway. There's that. So now the ladies are um, one by one arriving at the, in the lobby, getting ready for Pride. Julie's super queered out, like has this like neon um, orange dress on, um, has the Pride, um, has a Pride flag basically on her um, eyelids, this eyeshadow. And she made a side for Adriana. And Adriana being her best friend, she did not spell her name right. Which is, again, why I said what I said. It's weird. Like, <laughs> and everyone's just like commenting at her. It's like, how is she your best friend? You spell her name wrong. And I was confused by that too. And then even in her confessional, she, she doubles down and spells it based off of what's in her phone. And the producer has to tell her, girl, that's spelled wrong. That's not how you spell her name. <laughs> and anyway, so... Adriana's already there, and we find out that it's not one thousand, it's not one hundred thousand people that are going to be there. It's two hundred thousand people that is going to be there for her, like for her performance. So and so, basically, I think this might be one of the largest Pride festivals in the world, not just in Latin America, like in the world. So yeah, it looked crazy. It looked crazy, but anyway. So back at the lobby. Gertie is, has arrived and the ladies are happy to see her and she has rallied, honey. She is ready. She's ready to have a good time. She got her IV. So her vitals are back up. She's hydrated. She has plenty of water with her. They're ready to go. So the ladies head to the van and Lisa is late again. It's the entitlement of it all. And that's why I, you know, I've called out every single episode how many times Lisa is late. Because to me, being late is a form of entitlement. I cannot stand when people are late. I know I do it sometimes, especially, well, actually I've gotten better about it lately because <laughs> my time management's finally getting back to the way it was before. But come on, you can't do this all the time. But anyway, so they get to the... Because she's late, um, the only seat that's available is next to Kiki. She doesn't want to sit there so because she's still being a Karen about the whole entire thing. And being basically completely self-absorbed, which is literally proving <laughs> Kiki's point. And so she ends up moving somewhere else. And, and, and then, anyway. So the ladies do finally arrive, and this place is huge. Kiki and Lisa do talk briefly. And they're going to table it for now. But Lisa just keeps the whole entire time. So when they go to table it, she makes a joke of, you're not going to throw anything at me, are you? Thinking is funny, but it's not. No one else is laughing. She's the only one that thinks she's coping with it. And it's like, girl, well, you cope like a five-year-old. You don't cope like an adult. And then... As they're like all dancing outside and getting ready, they're, they're at their VIP spot. Kiki and Lisa, and Lisa are dancing around and kicking a little bit. And then as Kiki kicks, Lisa's like, so you're not going to fight me, are you? And I'm just kind of like, Lisa, I really need you to read the room. 
these passive aggressive digs that you keep saying, you don't say that when any other ladies have gotten in your face before. But you're saying it towards Kiki. And I don't like it. I don't like it. Anyway. So, and I thought I was the only one who was catching it. <laughs> we find out later on, I was not the only one catching that. Kiki was catching it too. We were both like here on the jabs. It's like, girl, you don't quit poking the bear. But anyway, so Adriana has one minute to like perform, like get on stage and perform. And she's freaking out. The ladies are waiting along, um, along with the rest of the crowd. And it looks like, it looks bananas. It looks bananas. And she is on stage. She's like, Miami's hot, 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 hot fire. Miami's hot, 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 hot fire. You already knew I was going to sing it. I just didn't sing it at the beginning like I normally do because she was doing it. She was performing it. But she def she was lip singing, um, which I'm kind of glad she was because I was a little worried for her otherwise. Because when she was talking at the beginning, her voice seemed like it was going in and out a little bit. So it was definitely good that she was lip singing. Um, the dance, she she did a good job. Everything went as expected. And she did it. And all the ladies were like giving her her flowers. Um, anyway, so the performance is over with. The ladies leave and they get ready to go out for the night. Um, Lisa is getting ready. Gertie's also getting ready and trying not to get sick um, as she's talking to um, Russell FaceTime. And because um, getting sick right before chemo, that's no bueno. We don't, she, she, she can't, that's not good because chemo is already going to make her sick. So she needs to have a, a strong immune system for this. Um, anyway, so. And also the party is in the hotel that they're at, apparently, so that they don't have to go very far. They basically are drinking at like the I think they're drinking in like the common area that like. Um, no, I think it actually might be Alexia's room because I think Alexia has a larger room. And so there's a bar there and they're drinking there. And then from there, then they're going to go downstairs and go to the club. But anyway. So. Um, Alex, so Alexi is actually at the bar getting the bartender prepared to serve the ladies, kind of just going over things. And then Lisa arrives first for once. And then she orders like this super complicated skinny margarita, which annoys Alexia because it's like, girl, we're in Mexico. Like you just order it the way it is here. <laughs> like... I'm not going to lie. I kind of got why Alexi was annoyed because again, it's very, it's not just her being, it's not just Lisa being entitled that I've noticed that I have a problem with her the last two episodes. She doesn't have, she just seems very culturally ignorant. And for someone, for her marrying rich and per, I would assume she was traveling, right? Why is she so culturally ignorant? It just, that's how it, it comes off. It comes off like she's super culturally ignorant. Anyway. So Dr. Nicole arrives with Lisa, by the way. So she was already there with Lisa. Kiki arrives next. She greets everyone. And Lisa brings up the juice, juice box thing again. And Kiki's over it. Kiki's like, oh my gosh. Because, and we find out the reason why Kiki's over it is because Kiki, just like I mentioned, how I was taking notes, she too is reading the tea leaves. It's like, what is this with this girl? Why does she only do this with me? Because I feel like that's what's happening here. Because, I mean, if you go back to previous seasons, Lars has been aggressive towards her. She's had arguments where... Um, um, Alexia has went off on her and she does not give those other ladies the same kind of energy as she gives Kiki. And it, it really, it, I don't want to put that on her jacket, but the, the Karen behavior 
It's called care and behavior for a reason because usually that's part of it too. So, um, Lisa and like, um, Dr. Nicole and Alexia, they go outside and, um, <clears throat> Larsa actually arrives and she sees the tension. So she does ask Kiki what happened. Larsa is like all the way on Kiki's side on this. Like she's not even on Lisa's side at all when it comes to this. And Lisa is one of her close friends, but like, you know, Larsa, because Larsa has been such a close friend towards Lisa, I think she is done with it too, but not as badly because again, that is her close friend and she's been trying to find ways to tell her like, look, the ladies are tired of your BS. But the thing is, it's not like she's the only one that feels that way. Anyway, so while this is happening, Lisa is venting to Dr. Nicole and Alexia and they're trying to reason with her. It's like, girl, the things you're doing is very passive aggressive. It's, it's not what, what you think you're, you think what you're doing is lighthearted. It's not, it comes off a different way. And both of them are trying to explain that to her. Cause it's like literally everyone else can see that it's coming. What she thinks she's projecting out there is not how it's being received and she's not getting it. it it's not clicking. And Julia arrives and child Julia <laughs> Julia is really fine for her mojito this season. But not in the right way. I, I'll be honest, like at first when she came into this scene, I thought she was going to give light fun and because she was dressed like light and fun and, and basically her, um, child, her coochie was out. <laughs> her coochie was completely out. Uh, like the shirt, the dress was so short and she wasn't wearing any underwear. So it was out there. So I was like, girl, what are you trying to do tonight? <laughs> and, um, she does greet Kiki and Larsa and proceed to get a drink. And Larsa and Kiki are still talking though about what's going on. And Kiki's venting to Larsa about, you know, Lisa and what's going on. And how and basically long story less long, Kiki's over it and is calling her entitled because she Kiki has said Kiki has said nothing but the truth this this episode and the episode before. Kiki ain't been lying this whole entire time. Nothing that Kiki has said has been incorrect. Except, well, except for towards the end, she kind of took it to hell. Towards the end, she took it to hell, but I, she got pushed. So is what is there. But Julia is hearing everything is being said and literally carries the bone directly to Lisa. She goes outside and literally tells Lisa everything that they were talking about, but she doesn't tell them everything. She only tells the negative part about how Kiki calls her entitled and all this other stuff. So now Lisa's on guard. Lisa's overly upset. Lisa before probably could have been reasoned with because they were going that direction. And then when L Julia did what she did, because again, when Julia does her thing of tone, when she carries things, she sucks at tone. She sucks at delivery and she doesn't in timing. She doesn't understand any of that stuff. She just isn't. So it's very messy. It's never good. And it's like, she doesn't recognize that she's not helping. She's making it worse. And so while this is happening, Dr. Nicole's like, why did you just do this? What is wrong with you? <laughs> okay. So then Gertie and um, Adriana arrived and Gertie's outfit was giving what need to be gave. I loved it. I love how Gertie has rallied and now she's back and she's doing her thing. Um, but anyway, the rest of the ladies are now inside. Dr. Nicole Rever Una reverses and bone carries everything Julia did to Larsa and Kiki. And Julia's right there. She's like, yeah, I did it. <laughs> what is wrong with this lady? And then Julia's still trying to kiss everybody. I'm like, so you're just, you, so when you say you have loose lips, you have loose lips this whole entire episode, both ways, mouth and mouth. Like girl, anyway. 
So we also find so um we also find out that Marisol is sick, so she's not going. But Kiki the whole entire time is like, I said what I said. So what you heard, I that's what I said. And I'm not changing it. Anyway, the rest of the ladies do head out to go to the party. And all the other ladies having a good time, doing their thing, just like dancing. And Lisa is being a party pooper. And <sighs> Julia is like, I didn't learn my lesson. I'm going to make this worse. She literally goes to Lisa and literally tells her everything that was said among all the ladies this whole entire time about the whole thing. No, like, it was like sex without foreplay. <laughs> I was like, why did you just rah, ram it in her face about everything that was said? So clearly this did not make Lisa feel any better. It made it much worse. And Gertie is sitting next to Lisa, who is sitting next to Julia. And Gertie can hear everything. And Gertie's like, she is doing it again to Dr. Nicole. And Dr. Nicole's like, I, I know you lying. Like, what is wrong with her? <laughs> and the thing is, this makes it... it and I don't know if Julia doesn't realize this, but I'm like, Julia, girl, you're encouraging her behavior. Uh, you're encouraging Lisa's behavior of staying a victim because that has been basically what she's been doing the whole entire time. She is staying a victim because she thinks just because she's a victim when it comes to um, a victim, when it comes to Lenny, she's a victim when it comes to everybody. And that's not how that goes. And honestly, I'm not even sure if you're a victim completely when it comes to Lenny at this point because of the way you've been acting. I could see how Lenny could be irritated with you because you really are coming off so entitled. Maybe that was his problem with you. I ain't gonna lie. I don't think he de you deserved what he did to you because that was really messed up. But, you know, he could have been a man just left you and call it good and then, you know, have another woman. But I don't know. Anyway, that's still a little bit messed up too because you, you guys have children. So no, Basula, he's, he's Basula, but child, I think you might be in the garbage right next to him, the way you've been acting. Anyway, so Lisa threatens to leave the party. She wants to leave the party and the ladies are trying to like reason with her and now it's back to being about her again. And... So the ladies do end up leaving with her and child, it just goes, it gets, it gets worse. It's like, why this would have been such a great trip if Lisa wasn't there. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. And for those who know, I also review Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. And it's like, y'all could have had that kind of a trip, a chill, fun trip, a lighthearted trip. You don't have to have drama during your whole entire trip. And Lisa doesn't know how to turn it off because she's so self-absorbed. And what I got to say next, you're going to find out more how self-absorbed she really, really is. It, you think what she did last episode was bad. Child, it gets so much worse. So the ladies leave with her. And I'm just like, damn it, Julia. <laughs> just I, it's so crazy because I like Julia this whole entire episode till towards the end of the episode. I'm like, what is this lady doing? And so they get back and pretty much a combination of Dr. Nicole, Larsa, and Kiki have to clean up Julia's mess because Julia is, the way she delivers it and the way she tells Lisa the things it's not quite correct so it comes it sounds much worse than what the ladies are saying it sounds a lot worse because Julia doesn't seem to understand tone and delivery and timing like all three of those she she knows nothing about so Dr. Nicole is trying to kid love it and Lisa's kind of receiving it Larsa's even trying to kid love it too Larsa 
it seems like Lisa's receiving it. But man, when Kiki gets involved, she ain't she ain't listening to anything she has to say. And this is even and this has happened more than once with with when it comes to this with Lisa. But anyway, so Kiki, at a last ditch effort, tries to like reason with her, and Kiki ends up breaking down and crying, which. Honestly, it further upset me because I'm like, don't let this woman make you cry. It's her fault that all this is transpiring this way. But anyway, so Kiki explains what triggered her. She literally breaks down the whole entire thing. She's crying. She's explaining like, look, my background is you're talking about those houses as if like that's where poor people live and stuff. That's how I grew up. Just because you live in those type of houses doesn't mean your quality of life is garbage. And Lisa tries to argue with her and say that's not what she said. But she literally did say her tone was literally that. It was giving that. She didn't say that exactly. But the way she was behaving and acting, there's no dancing around it. It, it was giving that. And even the producer's re re round that beaming footage and showed yeah lisa no you were doing that and then kiki even explains like hey you know you're talking about how hard your life is right now it's not that hard you're divorcing a million a, a billionaire basically a billionaire plastic surgeon you're still gonna be a millionaire when all this is over with you know, Kiki's like, I came from a background where I got kicked out of my house when I was 15 years old. And I had to work from ground up to get to where you guys were even at today. Like, I didn't sleep with, like, when she was talking, when she was venting to um, Larsa about, she's like, I didn't sleep with a surgeon to get money. I had to make my own money. That's the difference. So it's like, girl, you're entitled. Accept it. You know? And she's just complete in complete denial about it. But anyway, so Kiki does further explain. She's like, no one ever asked me how I'm doing. Because also the other thing is that I think she didn't really share. Or maybe if she did, it was edited out. You know, Kiki has been struggling this whole entire season with the ladies just kind of like forgetting about her and stuff. Like... The way the ladies did not come to her party after she invited them to her party and couldn't even wait an extra 10 minutes to go to the party. I think that is part of Kiki's frustration too that isn't being spoken about. But anyway, Kiki's like, I'm literally truly on my own here. Kind of similar to what Larsa was saying like a couple episodes ago, but it was like, girl, it wasn't landing all the way because Larsa... It just wasn't landing all the way because for one, Lars is not likable. And for two, we really don't know what's going on with Lars behind the scenes because she doesn't share her life ever on this show. Um, but in Kiki's place, is case, it's a true statement. And she does, even father states like, I'm a single mom of two. I don't have a man helping me out. I'm doing that on my own. So, you know, comparison... You have, you're, you're complaining about first world problems and Lisa still doesn't get it. And she continues to be entitled about it. Like she basically states like, instead of like listening and receiving what Le what, um, Kiki is saying, she's like, I can't help you with your childhood trauma. And that's where she lost me yet again. Where did in, in anything that Kiki said, did she say that that was childhood trauma? So you're still assuming that <laughs> this is what gets me. She's like proving the point even further. It's like Kiki never said that she literally was been trying to tell you that those people probably have a decent quality of life. So you doubled down and said that they don't, saying that's childhood trauma. Yeah. So basically, Kiki completely snaps because 
she literally still it's like it's very clear to me that kiki is very proud of where she comes from that's not childhood trauma is being proud of where you come from and because lisa is so shallow and she thinks money is everything when literally that money is destroying her and making her into the monster that we see this whole entire season and she don't even know it like and kiki even says in the confessional she's like money isn't everything it's really not like I don't know why she's acting like that, but anyway, so, but yeah, anyway, Kiki ends up clearing her completely and just going off on her and says, well, maybe what's happening between you and Lenny is karma and leave. She was gone. She said what she said. She cleared her. She was out. She was done with her. And Ollie's like, oh, no, no, no. Oh, gosh. And then the episode ends. Kiki. Kiki's the MVP of the show. I ain't gonna lie. I love Kiki on this show. I need her to be full time. Not that it matters because the way Real Housewives of Miami is filmed, everyone is basically considered full time. Like, I don't think the pay is that, but everyone gets equal screen time for the most part. And I need more of Kiki on my screen. We'll say that. And less of bone carrying um, Julia. Because, child, I'm kind of kidding. I'm actually kidding. But she was messy this episode. <laughs> but anyway, that does conclude this episode. Miami is still giving what needs to be gave. And I apologize. I know this is a much longer review than what I've been doing. But Miami just be giving so much. It's hard. I can't even, I can't even, can't even squeeze it down. It's so juicy. It's so good. Anyway, please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon and Nostalgic Runner. And I will see you next time. Bye.